Hello friends. I've been MIA again, which I feel like is just a part of the routine. And if you've been with me, you can see the like roller coaster of around for a couple days, MIA for a little bit. Um, the summer has been pretty wild for me. And when you're living with a chronic illness, you never know what's gonna happen. It's been all positive and wonderful. But most recently, one of my favorite ladies just became a mom and I became a godmother, which is all the most beautiful, amazing thing ever. But it also, positive things cost spoons. So I've been in baby land, but I have been meaning to talk about this for a while and it keeps popping up in different communities that I'm in or groups of friends in different ways. So again, this is just random thoughts of my brain and let's hope there's a linear path. But I wanna talk about diagnoses, doctors, and just like dealing with that. Those two things are huge things on their own, but they do kind of go hand in hand. So first and foremost, getting diagnosed is really hard with anything, especially with chronic illnesses, especially with rare chronic illnesses, especially with rare chronic illnesses that are invisible for women. <laughs> We're just so lucky, aren't we? Um, I wanna reiterate how important it is to be your own advocate and how you must be a diligent note taker and be incredibly mindful about what is happening with your body on a daily basis and how it changes when you make changes and keeping it in a way that makes sense to you as well as you can present to doctors to help you get diagnosed. So pre-diagnosis you are your, I mean, really after two, you are your diligent note taker and health manager collecting all of these things. And just, I know it's really hard to say, I mean, I can give my own perspective, is that when I was almost diagnosed, a lot of people were like, oh, you know, I'd gotten my test uh, my stem test for Addison's we were waiting for the results and a lot of people were like, I really hope you don't have it. Oh my God, this would be terrible. And in my mind, I'm like, I just hope this, I, yes, I hope I'm diagnosed with this. I hope this is what I have because having an answer gives you a direction. And that was all I wanted after years and years and years of being told I was crazy. It's in my head. I'm bipolar. Um, it's feminine issues, it's all stress related, all of these things, which of course, you know, there's elements of it playing a factor in my stress disease. I just wanted a freaking label that would give me a direction to go in. So getting a diagnosis can be very, very taxing, but don't give up. Reach out to other people. Here's the thing too, the more we talk about chronic illnesses and the more we talk about our symptoms and what's happening to our bodies, maybe it can spark something for somebody else who's going through something similar as you and you guys can help find a name or a support for what's happening in your body. Yeah. Once you get diagnosed, a lot can happen. You are having an answer, which I think is not highlighted enough, how getting an answer is a victory. Yet nobody wants to be told that they have a chronic illness or they're gonna, you know, it's never gonna get better, it'll never go away. But there is some sort of celebration internally of, I'm not crazy. Yeah, I'm not crazy, it's real. And okay, now what? Now there's a name to this. So there's a celebration on the diagnosis. Then it's like, well, what do I do next? I feel awful. I'm gonna be on steroids for life. I am miserable, I'm depressed. Yes, all of these things come hand in hand with the chronic illness. There's a period of grieving your old body and grieving the 
steps that you have to take in order to manage this new body and grieving what you will no longer have and being sad and mad and frustrated and angry about that and possibly losing friends and family and work because of these situations. So obviously there's a lot of a negative that comes with it too. But when you are diagnosed, it's super important not to overwhelm yourself more than you can. And I think it's, I don't know. I know my personal experience is once I was diagnosed, I went a little bananas trying to become a professional expert on what was happening in my body, which is important to do. However, I think I went to an extreme and I stressed myself out and overwhelmed myself out. And I almost like gave myself a second job trying, I mean, yes, your health is a second job, but second job trying to like, I don't know, read every book on the planet about Addison's which is something I still like to do and want to do and I encourage doing, but it doesn't have to be done the day after being diagnosed. Get all this time now to read and discover and learn and manage. So first and foremost, don't dive off the deep end into like research and sanity because it can be really overwhelming. I'm not saying it's not good to do. I'm all about research and learning. I love learning about new things. I love learning about the body. Um, but also, there was just not a lot out there when I was first diagnosed, which is another reason why I created this platform. Yeah. So take it slow. And to, I would say, try to be, I mean, everyone's going to handle things differently, but I personally have found being vocal about my conditions and talking about them and normalizing them. I, again, I can only give my own personal experience. I'm not embarrassed about my conditions. I'm not embarrassed about what's happening in my body. I am happy to talk about it and excited to talk about it with anyone and everyone because the more normal I make it, the more normal it is and the more people will recognize and understand and hopefully support not only me, but everyone that's dealing with something along these lines. So talking about it and talking about it to your friends and family, you may need to do it slowly um, or all at once. But doing that sort of sets this net out for a new expectation of what hopefully people will have for you. Not in a negative way, it's just that please understand that I'm no longer gonna be able to go climb every single mountain out in the world. I would like to, but I have to do it in a different way and please, um, honor that maybe I'm just gonna go for a walk around the lake instead and hopefully the more you talk about it that will soak in <laughs> for them and the more you talk about it too the more you find your people and the more you find people who are like-minded who are experiencing the same things and who understand and having a community and having people to bounce ideas off with and just hold the space for you is so essential and so important. And so healing and just so reassuring that you're not alone because you are not alone. You are so not alone. There are so many of us. It's rare. All of these conditions are rare and unusual and strange, but there's more of us than you understand. So many people hide once they get their diagnosis. Um, and I understand that, you know, everyone's got their own way to handle things, but I feel like the more we rise up to the surface of society, the more we can find each other, and then maybe the more we can support each other and find new ways to support our conditions. Maybe there's people out there who are like, I am really interested in that disease. Let's do more research on it. Boom. Maybe we have a cure for all of these horrible things that we're all dealing with, or new ways to manage them that are less invasive or damaging to our bodies. Yeah, that would be great. So, mm. <laughs> I'm all about being diagnosed and I advocate and hope that everyone can find their diagnosis and don't stop until you find it. And understand that maybe one is not all of it. Since being diagnosed with Addison's, I've been diagnosed with three other conditions, probably more later, uh, especially if you're autoimmune based, they tend to come in threes and that's okay for me i'm okay with it honestly the new ones that come in i'm kind of like eh, what else you got and 
yeah, you just add it and you learn to navigate each one and taking the same steps of like learning it slowly but surely, learning how to apply, how to adapt it, and talking about it and finding the community with it has all been really supportive. That's a little spiel on diagnosis. So now I want to talk minorly about doctors and the cats are going to go crazy while that happens. Um, bedside manner <laughs> and handling doctors and finding the right one. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So it's really hard <laughs> to find doctors that'll believe you and hear you and listen to you and trust you. All I have to say is shop for a doctor like you're shopping. Hey, come in here. Like you're shopping for groceries. I'm pretty intense about my food and putting whole real food into my body, which is part of my personal health care. And I wouldn't just go to the grocery store and just grab any box of food or like any vegetable or whatever without knowing what it was or where it came from or understanding what was inside of it. And I would do the same thing with my doctors. I have done the same thing with my doctors. I shopped around for an endocrinologist and I know not everyone has that luxury and I didn't initially, but it kind of fell into place. I was very fortunate and lucky to end up with the doctors that I have. Uh, and I have a pretty, I will say this, get a team. When it comes to doctors, you need a team of people to support you. First and foremost, I have a primary care physician who is awesome for so many reasons. And in actuality, I've never actually seen the primary care physician. I've seen the nurse or whatever, but she is my person and I love her and I respect her and I appreciate her because she 100% believe me, believes me in everything that I say and do. And when I first came in and introduced myself and told her about Addison's disease, she straight up told me, she's like, I don't know anything about this disease. You're the expert on it. I'm going to do my research, but you do what you feel is right and we'll, do, we'll work on it together. And I was like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I have this amazing primary care physician and I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a primary care doctor who believes you. Uh, because whenever I have something going on, she has now gotten to the point where I don't have to go in to see her to get a um, referral to see another doctor. Because when I do that, and I, I'm sure you all experience it too, when I go into another doctor and I'm just looking for a referral, great, now I've spent all this money on a visit just so you can write down a piece of paper. So she trusts me and believes me enough that I can call and leave a voicemail. She will write me a referral and then I can go manage that next thing. Primary care physician that you trust and trusts you is amazing. Shop, shop, shop. Find one that will believe you and support you and hold the space for you. Depending on your condition, you need a specialist in what your disease is. I have Addison's disease is my most detrimental condition. So my endocrinologist is my specialist. And I like my endocrinologist as well. She trusts me. She's straightforward, uh, but she's also totally a doctor. She knows my witchy woo woo holistic methods and that I always prefer to do things as natural as possible, but she also knows that I understand the severity of my disease and that I need to be on steroids. The two of us together compromise and talk about things and she gives me plans and strategies if I'm wanting to taper down or if I'm gonna be doing some particular activity or adventure, she helps me kind of game plan out what medication to be doing. So she team works it with me. Specialist, primary care. Then I highly recommend having doctors or um, wellness practitioners to support you as well. I'm a big advocate for acupuncture, supporting the whole system, all the systems, massage, yoga, Pilates. Again, time and time again, I've talked about my friend Tandy who, um, manages Unicorn Wellness. It's an online wellness platform. That is my favorite way to move my body, uh, as well as has components of healing through food, through her food reset. That is another part of my, I will say my, my health team. Yeah, I've got my doctor, my primary care, my specialist, my wellness coach, uh, and then me. <laughs> and between it, it takes a village. I've also got other friends who, um, 
I've got other friends who offer their support and their guidance and what's working for them. So my community is also part of my health team. And it's really just essential to find ones that suits you and fits your needs. And just above all else, believe you and hear you. If nothing else happens and your doctor or whomever, and again, this is just my opinion, if they say, I'm so sorry, I don't know what's wrong with you, I believe you, I don't know what it is, but let's find it together. That's a solid doctor because they're being honest and genuine and hearing you out instead of just disregarding you, diminishing you, and just being completely disrespectful, which is what we've all experienced time and time again. I will never forget, and I've shared before, how I was told I had Addison's disease and how my doctor told me I'd be steroid dependent for life. And before I really understood everything, I said, well, what if I didn't take the steroids? What would happen? And my doctor, deadpan, immediately just said, you're going to die and soon. Not cool, dude. <laughs> and of course, I just started sobbing and lost it. And he was just like, I thought you understood the severity of this disease. Yep, did, but also um, maybe don't tell people they're going to die that aggressively and that deadpan. Um, so find a doctor with solid bedside manner because we all deserve to be treated with respect. And if you have a chronic illness or you're living with chronic pain and you don't know what's wrong with you, the last thing you need is someone to be rude to you as well. So you are worth finding the right doctors. You are worth finding the right team. You are worth the time and energy. I know it is exhausting. I know it takes time. I know it takes energy, but it's worth it when you come through the other end. And I remember being in it and feeling like the pain and the fatigue and the exhaustion was going to be forever. And here I am a couple years later. It's not perfect, but I definitely have a better system and I definitely feel better about things. I have more good days than bad days. And it's a process. It's an ever going process. And you don't have to choose one thing or another. You can bring all aspects of healing and wellness in the world and education together. Because the more you learn, the more you know, the more you can support yourself on your own personal journey. This was very long winded and I'm not actually sure if I talked about anything that I wanted to talk about, but I hope I at least grazed on <laughs> what to do after being diagnosed and doctors and all that jazz. Oh, who knows? As always, thank you guys so much for being here. Light and love, all the spoons, and I hope you have a wonderful day.